In this video, I will share my fast-paced smooth character controller that allows you to slide on the floor, jump into a wall run and parkour around. Recently, the YouTube algorithm blessed me with Blargis and the fast action-packed game he is working on called Blood Thief. He has the smooth and fast character controller built in Godot, which gave me the itch to recreate a similar fast-paced character controller in Unity. Let's get started with the required setup. The .ween package. This isn't absolutely needed. In this script, I only use them to do things slowly instead of instantaneously. For things like setting the player's visual to the sliding position or rotating the camera around when wall running, you could recreate this using coroutines like so. But if you don't want to deal with coroutines, I added a link in the description to the .ween setup website. Another thing you need to have is a direction raycast checkers. I use these scripts to check if the player is grounded or next to a wall. You can define the length and the direction of the ray and which layers it should check for. Then in your character controller, you can simply check a collider's is colliding variable at any moment. Now onto the setup of the scene. Every collider in the game, the player, walls, ground, etc. has the slippery physics material because I want to implement my own slowing down mechanics without using the built-in physics friction and that way I have more control over the character controller. The physics level was made using ProBuilder which is not required but whatever you use to create your level, make sure that every surface that the player interacts with is on the level layer. You can name this something else, just select the correct layer on your collision detection raycast script. You can also expand on this mechanism by adding different layers to different surfaces, such as floors where you can't wall run or slide, or an icy floor where you slide faster, or a swamp floor where you can't jump etc. Finally in your scene, you must have at least these game objects in the correct hierarchy. A player game object attached with the character controller, which also has the capsule collider and a rigid body component. It has a child player visual, this as the name suggests hosts the mesh renderer so the player's visual can be manipulated without moving everything else such as the camera or the physics colliders. Then it has a child camera holder so the camera can be moved individually, which in turn has a child camera rotator so the Z axis of the camera can be rotated individually. You'll see how is this used in the character controller, which finally hosts the camera. Lastly, the raycasts game object holds all the directional raycasts as the name suggests. The bottom raycast is used to check if the player is grounded and the left and right raycasts is used to check if the player is next to a wall used for wall running. Moving on to the optional part of the setup, in order to see the player's speed values and which states they are currently in, I have this basic UI setup. Attach this player states manager script to any game object and fill out all the UI elements in the inspector. Alright, with all the preparation out of the way, let's rebuild the movement script together step by step and understand what's going on. First, we'll give the player the ability to look around horizontally. The code is really simple. First define a mouse sensitivity variable, which I set to 300 by default, and then the transform is rotated horizontally based on the horizontal mouse movement. Next step is enabling the player to look up and down. The important difference unlike the horizontal movement is that the actual player transform isn't rotated up and down, just a camera that is on the player. First, define the vertical rotation variable at the top of the class. This is so that we can keep track of the current vertical rotation and add or subtract from it as the player rotates. And also, the vertical rotation can be clamped, which I set to 90 degrees myself, so you can't look behind the top or below the bottom, but you can change this. At this stage, I want to note that almost all the physical movement is called in fixed update, since it has to do with the physics. But these two camera movements are on regular update function, since otherwise the camera feels jittery. Let's move on to the basic movement. In order for movement to work properly, you need to check if the player is grounded using the bottom collider. So first add this functionality to the fixed update. Then add the movement function to the fixed update. And this movement function will evolve as we add more stuff. But for now, we just get the keyboard inputs. And if there is no input being pressed, bring the player to a sharp stop where it feels snappy but not instantaneous. So the movement feels responsive. Then we look at their horizontal velocity. If the player is going faster than the base speed, we let them keep that speed since we want the player to be able to build up momentum. But we dampen their speed a little bit every frame. So if they want to keep going fast, they have to perform actions to keep their speed up. Note that we keep the vertical velocity out of these calculations because if you dampen the vertical velocity, it looks like the character is weirdly floating. So instead, we just add the original vertical velocity back at the end. I know this is pointless right now because the player is grounded, but once we start jumping, it will make more sense. Well, on that note, moving on to jumping, we check for key inputs on update function, since again, it will be smoother. But we do the actual jumping or other actions for that matter on fixed update. You can do this by keeping track if a state was initiated via a boolean. Then on fixed update, where the actual jumping happens, 
check if the player is grounded and if that's the case we let them jump. We keep track of the last speed before they take off because the player can keep moving while they're on air. This isn't realistic but this allows for more precise movements. And unless we cap their movement speed to their speed before they took off, they can just keep speeding up in midair which isn't what we want. So we implement the speed cap in the movement function where the maximum allowed speed might be more if the player was faster when they took off and that will be the highest speed they can have until they land. Okay, let's see here, uh, what's a good segue to sliding? Well, sliding is really fun and uh, now let's talk about how I implemented it. Similar to jumping, we listen for a key hit on update. Once it's initiated, we check if the player is not grounded or already sliding and finally we check if they have enough speed. And once all those checks clear, we start sliding. One thing I want to mention here is that you may have realized that we return after stopping the slide initiation for every case except for not being grounded. This is intentional since this allows the player to immediately and seamlessly start sliding as soon as they hit the ground if they hit the sliding key while in mid-air. Once started, we move the camera down a bit and tilt the player's visual downwards too to make it look like they are sliding. Then, we add a speed boost to the player's current speed, which is further amplified based on how fast they were going before they started sliding. And finally, we get their direction, multiply it with their boosted speed and set it as their current velocity. While sliding, we dampen the speed a little bit every second and as long as they are above the minimum speed to keep sliding, they do, otherwise they come to a stop. With the current dampening value, the player comes to a full stop in about 3 seconds which is similar to Fortnite. They also stop immediately if they are no longer grounded. Finally, we also update the horizontal rotation code, enabling the player to steer left or right a little bit if they are sliding. Oh and I almost forgot, movement inputs are ignored while the player is sliding, or when they are wall running. You know what, how about we go over wall running right now. I wanted the wall running to also start by hitting the space key, similar to jumping. You may want a different key and in that case you need to listen to it on update like before. But since I already listened for the jump initiation, I just used the same boolean. The code for the wall running is a little messy but I got you ok, let's go through this step by step. When you hit the space key and you are up in the air, we first check if the player is already wall running, because if they are, that means they want to jump off. And the player can specifically choose which way they want to jump towards. If they aren't pressing on any keys, they just jump upwards. But they can decide to also jump forward or the opposite direction off of the wall they are running on. Or a combination of directions depending on which keys they are holding down. If the player isn't already wall running, we check if there is currently a wall on either side. And if there is, we call the start wall running function indicating which direction the wall was at. Where true means right and false means left. Before we go over what happens when you start wall running, let me quickly show you the side colliders setup. The colliders, similar to the ground ones, simply point to the left and right. But unlike the ground collider, they have rotate with transform boolean checked off, which means they will always point directly to the player's left and right, even if the player rotates around. This means you need to keep the wall on your side to keep wall running. You might say, hey man that's annoying, I wanna look around and shoot and whatever, but otherwise you wouldn't be able to slide on diagonal walls or circular walls etc. Now you can go around cylinders or curved walls as long as you keep turning around. Anyways, back to wall running. Alright, so once the player starts wall running, the gravity is disabled and they slide forever along the wall. But this boolean can also be set to true, where the player will slowly fall down as they wall run. Once they start wall running, the player's camera and visual is rotated away for cool looks. And then the player's wall running speed is set, which will be constantly held as long as they wall run. If you want to change this, you can set it so that the player slows down over time or maybe speed up on special walls etc. Finally, once the player stops wall running, the player's visual and camera has moved back and the gravity is turned back on and that's it. So what is going on while the player is wall running? If they are grounded or if the walls end aka the side collectors aren't in contact anymore, the player stops wall running. Otherwise, check which collider is in contact, do some vector mambo jumbo to decide which direction the player should travel in. Set the player's velocity to the direction they must travel in, multiplied by the speed that they had when they started wall running. And other than that, stop wall running if they are too slow. And if you checked off the boolean that we discussed earlier, slowly decrease their y velocity over time so they keep dropping. Oh and also, push the player towards the wall they are riding on so they can hang on to the wall while they are running on circular walls. Alright well, uh, that was it. Now you can enjoy your character controller, capable of sliding, jumping, running in walls and parkouring all around. Thanks for watching, hope to see you next time.